This is the baffle for my home theater subwoofer. It's made out of two layers of three quarter inch birch veneer plywood that I got at the local home center. It's always a good idea to use a double baffle so your subwoofer will have additional support. And that requires laminating two pieces of material together, which sometimes can be tricky. Let me show you what I mean. So here I've got two pieces of scrap wood so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to slather on a bunch of glue and I'm going to use this cool spreader that I picked up on Amazon. I'll give you a link to it down in the description. Now these two pieces are the exact dimension that I need for my speaker baffle. I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm just going to stick them together, just put one on top of the other. Then I'm going to grab my clamps and clamp it down to hold it in place before I drive in a few brads. And then this happened. Ah, oh, fail. That glue, believe it or not, is pretty slippery when it's wet. And so if you put these two baffles together, they're gonna kinda slide around. And if you're not careful, you're gonna end up with this mismatched edge, and that is going to ruin your baffle. So I'm gonna show you some tricks so that you can get your two pieces perfectly aligned. The first trick is to just oversize the pieces a little bit and try to be real careful when you put it together. Then attach the baffle to the speaker box and hit it with a flush trim bit on your router. The second method is to just embrace the fail. So to do this, you're just going to cut your two pieces significantly oversized. And then when you clamp them together, you're going to very deliberately leave an edge along one side and then an edge along the bottom. These two edges will then be run across your table saw fence to trim off the excess. Start by trimming off the right side and when that's done you can reset your fence and trim off the left side. That's going to give me a perfect piece that looks like it was originally a double layer piece. This is probably the best way to do it because when you're done you can just cut out your speaker holes using whatever method you like. I prefer to use a Jasper circle jig with my router and then just grab a rabbiting bit and cut out the recesses with your router. But I couldn't do that this time because I don't have a rabbit bit big enough for the recess that I need on this driver. So what I had to do was to use my circle jig and cut the outer hole and the inner hole separately and then laminate these two pieces together. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to combine two old woodworking tricks. The first one is salt. We spread out all of our glue, then we take a little bit of table salt and spray it out over our surface. This table salt is going to provide a little bit of grit and it'll provide some traction so the two pieces don't slide around. And then the salt will just dissolve into the glue and have no impact on the strength of the glue, especially when you've got a baffle that's this large. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my larger clamps and I'm going to put these clamps on the edges to make sure my pieces are lined up perfectly. Now the clamps I'm using for this are actually the wrong kind of clamps. These are just straight up bar clamps. What you really need for this are some of these clamps right here. I don't have any and sometimes when you're a DIYer you just got to make do with what you have. Tools and equipment aren't free which is why so many YouTubers have channel sponsors and Patreon accounts. In fact I just recently started a Patreon and if you would like to support DIY audio content check out the link down in the description and sign up. And if you can't afford to that's all right. I'm still glad to have you here watching my videos. You can always support the channel by hitting that like button and sharing videos with other people who are into DIY audio. Speaking of other people who are into DIY audio, I've recently started a podcast and live stream with two of my DIY audio buddies, Hi5 Vega from the Hi5 Vega YouTube channel and Toyd from Toyd's DIY Audio. We live stream every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. Then we upload the audio to SoundCloud where you can listen to it wherever you happen to get podcasts. Next, I take a few clamps and hold the pieces together. So I jump in there with my brad nailer, drive a few brads. The brads will hold it together while the glue sets. I can pull all the clamps off. Now I gotta take my ports and my driver and test fit it to make sure this is gonna work. 
the driver fits like a glove. And if you want to learn more about the ports that I'm building for this subwoofer, check out this video right here. If you want to learn more about port tuning, check out this video right here. And if you'll hit the subscribe button, I'll see you on the next adventure.